Oh my god, my head really hurts. Hi everyone, this is Charge. Today, the film I'm going to talk about is Christopher Nolan's latest feature, Tenet. Tenet was written and directed by British-American film director Christopher Nolan. It's his 11th film. I don't need to give him that much of an introduction. He's a very well-known filmmaker. His last film, Dunkirk, in my opinion, is a masterpiece. I saw it five times in theaters. There was no other movie that came out that year that delivered the same experience that Dunkirk did. And with Tenet, Nolan is sort of doing the same thing by giving us a film that prioritizes the experience over everything else, including the story. The plot of this film is so vague, I'm not even sure I could spoil it if I tried. If you you go online and search Tenet Synopsis, it'll say a secret agent embarks on a dangerous time-bending mission to prevent the start of World War III. I think that's a little bit of an oversimplification, but the protagonist is played by John David Washington, who was in Black Klansman. And to be clear, the actual name of his character is the protagonist, which, if I'm being honest, seems a little weird. The main appeal of this film is not its story, it's not the characters, it's the concept that drives the film forwards, or backwards. It seemed like Nolan was looking for a story that could give him a reason to put together the most intricate and mind-blowing action sequences that all center around this complex idea of time travel. It reminded me a lot of Inception in that way, which is another film that also distorts time and focuses most of its attention on the concept rather than the characters. But with Inception, I felt like there was a lot more emotional weight to that narrative. It was fairly simple to follow, and I felt like I was invested in the main character's goal. I really wanted Leonardo DiCaprio to see his kids again. With this film, I didn't feel attached to any of the characters, including the protagonist. To be fair to Nolan, though, I'm not even sure if he was trying to get us that invested in the story or the characters. Pretty early in the film, the protagonist is recruited into the secret organization called Tenet to learn the abilities of what it means to be a Tenet, which is a person that has the ability to reverse the entropy of an object and make it move backwards through time, like unfiring a bullet. They also have the ability to reverse themselves by going into these turnstiles that allows them to experience time moving backwards. The process is called inversion, and as the protagonist is trying to figure out and understand what objects can move backwards, there's a Q-like character who trains him for like five minutes and says something to the effect of, don't think about it, just feel it. This is the best advice I could give to anyone watching this film. To me, that could have been Nolan's way of saying to the audience like, look, I have a film. It's not gonna make sense, but sit back and just go with it and I promise you'll enjoy the spectacle of it all. Some people might say, Josh, that's total BS. If that were true, then why the hell does Nolan spend so much time delivering all of these exposition dumps in the movie? And I think it's because Nolan still probably understood that a decent amount of time needed to go into explaining these concepts so that people would have just enough to go off of. Like the temporal pincer movement operation, which I, <laughs> I still don't know if I fully understand. The thing is, Tenet is so technically amazing and beautiful to look at, courtesy of Hoyt Van Hoytema, that it does make it easier to forgive some of its shortcomings. The only thing that was really frustrating for me technically was the mixing. You often can't hear a lot of the dialogue because it's buried beneath the sound effects and the music. I felt like I could have had a much better grasp of what was going on if I could have heard what the characters were saying. And this is not the first time Nolan has mixed the dialogue in his films this way. It's also an issue in The Dark Knight Rises, Interstellar, and even Dunkirk to some extent. A lot of people, including myself, are confused why he does it. If you, if you don't want people to hear the dialogue, then, then why have dialogue at all? According to sound supervisor Richard King, who's worked on some of the films I just mentioned, quote, he wants to grab the audience by the lapels and pull them toward the screen and not allow the watching of his films to be a passive experience. My advice would be to let go of any preconceptions of what is appropriate and right and experience the film as it is, because a lot of hard intentional thought and work has gone into the mix. While I do roll my eyes a little bit when I read that, it is very true that Nolan's recent films, especially Dunkirk, are very immersive and very much a full body experience. The difference between a film like Dunkirk and Tenet though is that Dunkirk it didn't need dialogue to work. The story is almost entirely told through visuals. Tenet is a film that constantly delivers exposition and could have really benefited from better dialogue mixing, or at the very least having subtitles, which I honestly prefer with every movie I watch. American theaters, please add subtitles to your screenings if you don't end up closing for good. Wow, that got dark. But Tenet's detachment from properly communicating the story and developing characters for the sake of perfecting this concept, while frustrating at times, in a way, makes it one of Nolan's most unique films. Tenet somehow manages to be the most Nolan film ever, barring a lot of traits from past films like Inception, but it's way more weird and nebulous. It's like this 
unsolvable puzzle that you kind of just look at in amazement. Amazing huge scale action sequences are nothing new for Nolan, but for some reason the action sequences in Tenet feel unlike anything I've ever seen before. It makes every action scene done by Michael Bay look like a toddler put it together. And for a film like this, it's really an achievement to have pulled off so many of these visuals practically when you think about what's happening conceptually. What often happens in this film is you have something moving backwards colliding with something moving forwards. There's a very complex fight scene that happens in a hallway in this film where one character is moving in reverse fighting another character who's moving forward and it's ridiculous in the most impressive way like how the hell does one even choreograph this? Another example could be a scene where you have one car driving forward and another car is chasing it in reverse and it's not like the car driving in reverse is going like 30 or 40 miles an hour, it's going like 70 or 80. And these mind-blowing visuals at a certain point become satisfying on both a technical and story level as they start to elucidate certain patterns and scenes that don't make sense at first. It's not like car chase scenes or hallway fight scenes are new for Nolan, but the way that it's done it's just, it feels different. Even the music feels differently, which is partly because Hans Zimmer wasn't involved who normally composes music for Nolan. Ludwig Gerenson was the composer for Tenet. I'm probably saying his name wrong, but it's some of the best music I heard in 2020. I've listened to it a ton of times. I would argue it might be one of the best Nolan film scores ever. It's comprised of these really dreamy sci-fi soundscapes that often blends Hans Zimmer-esque orchestral music with some more synthetic, electronic, and even industrial music with these heavy metal guitars that show up fairly often, like something you would hear out of the 2016 Doom soundtrack. I love it. I'm gonna talk about the opening scene briefly to explain why this music works so well, so if you don't want me to spoil too much about what's happening, go to this point in the video so you don't have to hear it. There's your warning, three, two, one. In the opening of the film, there's a concert happening in this opera house, and as it progresses, this unnerving orchestra section slowly starts to fade up that doesn't really go anywhere musically. It just lingers on these strings that get uncomfortably louder and louder, making you feel like something bad is about to happen. And then all of a sudden, these terrorists raid the building and take everyone inside hostage. The song then introduces these heavy guitar riffs that eventually welcome these loud percussive hits that adds so much intensity as these terrorists are beating everyone up and this massive SWAT team pull up outside and get ready to storm in. Right as they're about to enter the theater area, this aggressive throbbing synth line becomes crystal clear as each SWAT unit carefully lines up by each theater entrance. They pump gas into the chamber to try to sedate these terrorists, but they put these gas masks on. And then the scene climaxes as they enter the theater area to try to save these hostages, all the while being complimented with these incredibly bassy and loud drum beats that sound like they're about to blow out the speakers in the theater. It's just pure adrenaline and it's almost the best way to start a film. There's a lot more going on story-wise in this opening scene, but it's hard to make sense of all of it because you, you can't understand what the hell the characters are saying because it's buried beneath the music. Outside of the opening track, another song that's great is Foils, which is the main musical theme of the film. I get serious Westworld vibes when I listen to this, and I mean that in the best possible way. I love the way it ascends and ascends into this dreamy sci-fi bliss. By the time the song is peaked, you want to listen to it again. I'm sorry if this is turning into a music review. The soundtrack of this film is so good, so I, I just felt like I had to talk about it a little bit. But I think I've said enough about this film. It's definitely not going to be for everybody. It falls short both story and character-wise, but it's undeniably one of Nolan's strangest films in what I think is mostly a good way. I'm going to give Tenet a three and a half out of five. Thanks for watching, guys. Definitely try to watch this film on a big screen with nice loud speakers if you get the chance. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and let me know if there's anything you'd like me to review or discuss in the comment section below. Thanks again for watching, and have a great day. I will see you in the next video. Take it easy. Bye.